Coming up on First at Four, coronavirus cases continue to increase here in the United States, and economists warn unemployment could reach levels not seen since the Great Depression. Plus, a man is arrested in another state after police say he murdered a Pike County woman. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, breaking news. A John Hopkins University tally just released says confirmed cases of coronavirus have topped one million worldwide. Roughly 90% of the United States now is under stay-at-home orders. There are now more than 220,000 cases across the nation. New York has the most by far, with more than 92,000. The state also reported an additional 432 deaths, that's New York, an additional 432 deaths in the last 24 hours, and the governor there says the worst is still one to four weeks away. CBS's Naomi Rukum begins our coverage from New York. As the number of coronavirus cases continues to rise, paramedics in New York City received new orders. If they can't revive a patient at the scene, they are not to bring the patient to the hospital. ERs are overwhelmed. The turnover, someone, someone passes away, all right, get the room clean, next person in immediately. I mean, there's patients sitting in the ER on ventilators waiting to come up. Mayor Bill de Blasio thanked EMTs from out of state who came to help relieve the city's exhausted first responders. Lives are going to be saved because these reinforcements came. New York's governor said two more field hospitals like this one in Central Park will be going up soon in other parts of the city, but he said critical supplies are running low. At the current burn rate, we have about six days uh, of ventilators in our stockpile. In New Jersey, which is second only to New York in number of confirmed cases, Governor Murphy toured a field hospital being set up in the Meadowlands. This is a marathon. We're going to be in this for a while. And Louisiana reported more than 2,700 additional cases in the last 24 hours. New Orleans has a higher per capita coronavirus death rate than even New York City three times the rate. Both of our traditional ICUs are uh, full or, or almost full uh, of, of individuals who are either COVID-19 positive or under investigation. Back in New York, there is a bit of good news. The number of discharged coronavirus patients also continues to rise. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News, New York. Louisiana attributed the state's 42% spike in confirmed infections in part to backlogged test results, finally coming back from laboratories. A cancer survivor in Pulaski County has died from the coronavirus. This is the first confirmed death in WIMT's coverage area. Pulaski County Judge Executive Steve Kelly identified the victim as 62-year-old David Pittman. Kelly said this case was connected to a cluster of 14 cases tied to a church. As of right now, the governor's office is reporting 20 deaths statewide and 680 cases, but both of those numbers will certainly go up and possibly significantly today during his 5 o'clock news conference. We are hearing of new cases across the state today and even some new deaths. Our thoughts and prayers are with Pittman's family there in Pulaski County and all those across Kentucky that have lost loved ones. The West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources confirms a second coronavirus-related death there. Jackson County Health Department announced that the, that county's first death uh, announced that county's first death, bringing the state's total to two. Health officials say that victim had several underlying health issues and died while at the hospital. They are not releasing any additional information. West Virginia currently has 191 cases of the virus, while several other neighboring states to Kentucky have significantly higher numbers. The Democratic National Convention is the latest major event to be postponed due to the, the coronavirus. The convention is now set to take place during the week of August 17th. It was initially planned for mid-July so that it could precede the Summer Olympics. But when the Olympics were postponed, that left Democrats three weeks spanning July and August to hold the convention. The new date puts their convention the week immediately before the Republican National Convention. 
The pandemic is prompting unforeseen changes to the election process, including postponing virtually all in-person campaigning. Nurses at 15 hospitals in seven states are protesting this week over what they call a lack of preparedness by a major U.S. hospital chain. ICU nurse Diane Case shot this video inside her Yonkers, New York hospital because she says she is so concerned. The lack of personal protective gear is putting her and her fellow nurses at risk. And we are riddled with fear and anxiety because we don't have the proper equipment to take care of these patients. So what, we're expendable, that's how we feel. More than a dozen nurses in six states say their hospitals or nursing homes are rationing critical supplies. It is now routine for many of those places to reuse gowns and masks. A woman falsely claimed she had the coronavirus after the Whitesburg Walmart's loss prevention team accused her of shoplifting. WIMT's Will Puckett talked to the city's police chief about the bizarre incident. Whitesburg's police chief Tyrone Field says it is an incredibly dangerous claim. On Tuesday, WPD received a call from Walmart's loss prevention team saying a woman they stopped for shoplifting claimed she was running a fever and was tested for COVID-19. When an officer got to the scene, he was told the same story. After investigating, Fields learned the woman never took a COVID-19 test and was using that claim as a get out of jail free card. Something he says is incredibly dangerous and will carry more than just criminal charges. What we will do is we will put you on our Facebook page and we will let everyone that shares it, everyone that follows us and everything else, we will let everybody see what you have done uh, and then we will charge you. Now, police have not arrested the woman yet. They said they are still waiting on the charges. They would not give specifics as to what charges they are going to file. He said they expect that to be done by later this evening. In Whitesburg, Will Puckett, WYMT Mountain News. Police believe the woman made the claim, as Will said, as a get out of jail free card. With the coronavirus outbreak, jails are trying to find ways to depopulate its facilities. The Shelbyanna community of Pike County is dealing with the loss of one of its own. Jody Stapleton went missing earlier this week. Today, her loved ones received the news they never wanted to hear. WIMT's Buddy Forbes spoke to one of her co-workers who says this whole situation is unreal. Monday, Jody Stapleton was reported missing. Her photos circulating Facebook as family and friends hoped for the best. Today, Kentucky State Police found her body in Menifee County, sending a shockwave of emotion through the community. Troopers say the arrest of Anthony Hall in South Carolina led to a confession that he killed his girlfriend in Kentucky. Kentucky State Police found her body in Menifee County yesterday, giving her family and friends an answer to the question, where is Jody? But that answer led to more questions as they try to comprehend how and why this happened to their loved one. Jody was the type of person that brought laughter and happiness to everybody she encountered. And this world's not going to be the same without her. Right. I'm going to miss her. Several of Jody's friends and co-workers reached out just to send messages about who she was. One of them says the most important thing to know about Jody is that she was a mother who loved her son and a daughter who loved her parents. Those were the people she talked about every day. That is what mattered most in her life. Now, those I spoke with say they'll do whatever they can during this time to help the family get through. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WIMT Mountain News. We will have more about Jody's life and the hole her death has left coming up later. Well, as you guys know, we've been testing out some new technology over the past week. Brandon got his turn and now it's mine. Yes, I am here in my guest room doing live weather for today. But it's been a gorgeous day. Hopefully you got out and enjoyed it. It's been a little bit on the cooler side, but we'll go ahead and take you up to a few of those cameras where you can see we have seen plenty of sunshine throughout the day. Looking over into London, you can see those clouds definitely starting to clear out throughout the day and as we go ahead and take you up to Buffalo Mountain, plenty of sunshine, just a few stray clouds here and there. 
but finally after the past couple dreary days it's nice to get out and see some of that sunshine and those temperatures well they're going to start to get a little bit warmer as we head into the next couple of days the satellite radar really just shows a few clouds here and there other than that we have remained on that dry side and we're going to continue to see those clear skies and those warm temperatures as we head into the next few days temperatures have been into about the mid to upper 50s today we did get close to 60 it looks like 60 now in jackson 58 in harlan 61 in middlesboro a nice 59 over into Prestonsburg. Now that sunshine does continue as we head into the next couple of days, even continues as we head into the weekend. And if you're not a big fan of the temperatures, well, we will be warming up as we head into the weekend and maybe adding a few scattered rain chances by the end of the weekend, but still looking gorgeous as we head into the next few days. I'll have the rest of that forecast coming up in a little bit. All right, Paige, thank you. Well, as if we do not have enough to worry about right now, get ready for a busy hurricane season. Scientists with Colorado State University are predicting above normal activity for 2020. Hurricane season starts June 1st. Experts say their forecast models indicate there could be 16 named storms. An average season has 12. Of the projected 16, eight could be become hurricanes. Scientists say there is a 95% chance a hurricane will make landfall somewhere in the United States this year. A person died in a single vehicle crash in West Virginia this morning. It happened on Greenbrier Street in Charleston. Police say there were two men in the vehicle. One of them died. We do not know the other man's condition at this time. The road the, where the crash happened was shut down for hours. Coming up on First at Four, this coronavirus outbreak is causing millions of people to lose their jobs, and now many of them are seeking help. And we'll continue to see that sunshine as we head into the next few days. Temperatures will be on the rise as well. I'll have that full weekend forecast coming up.